Today, I want to talk about something that was on my mind. I had a conversation with somebody yesterday about this particular topic. What do you want to be when you grow up? <laughs> Let's talk about that and the impact it has on your life as an adult. What did you want to be? What did you want to be? You're welcome, babe. What did you want to be, Yaya, when you were younger, when you grew up? What did you tell yourself you wanted to be? Let me turn that on. What did you want to be? Hello, hello. You know, what I realized, though, is that whatever it was that we wanted to be, if we held steady to that thing, that thought, that imagination as a little child, we became that. It's like, it's funny how like when we were younger in school, school really didn't teach us that part about ourselves. Our parents, some of our parents may have, you know, to hold steady to that thought of whatever it was that we wanted to be. But then the program came into play and you begin to be told, you know, how, limit, how limited you were in a boundless universe. So when you decided that you wanted to be something that was maybe too great for your immediate family to grasp they were like well no you know they kind of like tone tone you down a little bit but think about this here though if you pay attention to like the beyonce's and the Lil wayne's you know famous people the football players basketball players you hear them say the same thing they knew <laughs> as a little boy as a little girl they knew that that's what they were going to be when they grew up. So what they did was they held on to that thought as a little girl, or as a little boy. And that thought became a belief in their mind, in their subconscious mind. And so they walked around every day with that knowing that, okay, I'm going to be the greatest rapper alive. Or I'm going to be the best R&B singer. I'm going to be a quarterback. You know, I'm going to be drafted in the, you know, NBA and I'm gonna I'm gonna be this I'm gonna be the first black president I'm gonna be a doctor I'm gonna be a lawyer that little boy that little girl hold on held on to that thought and so today as an adult that little boy a little girl is experiencing that thing because they held on to the thought but here's the thing about it. Those people in the physical reality who said they were going to be something hmm, as a little girl or a little boy and it didn't happen. The difference in the two is that the person who didn't achieve that, that thought did not properly get digested by their subconscious mind. They had that unwavering type faith, you know. They were like, ah, you know, they let that doubt and Thomas in their physical reality stop them from achieving that particular greatness. Because if it gets up in here, it doesn't matter if you went to Yale or you went to jail, you still gonna do this thing that gets deeply rooted in here because you planted the seed up in here. <laughs> and when you plant the seed in your subconscious mind, it takes root inside of you and it has to come forth in your physical reality. So if you were the type of person that a little girl, a little boy that said you were going to be a singer or a dancer or a player or whatever it was, and you achieved this here greatness, you know this to be true because you could look back and you'd be like, I just knew it. I don't know. It was just, it's just something, something in me that just told me I was going to be here today. You find comfort in knowing that. But if you did not, it's still not late for you. You can change your thought or your mind today to be greatness on tomorrow. Since you know now, since you know all those little girls and little boys that are achieving greatness right now, that they had a thought that got them there. That, oh no, it's not that they're special. It's not that they were grafted into generational wealth that made them so great. It's because they changed their mind. That's what made them so great. Because listen to this here. They have people in the physical reality that are rich. They don't really know how they got there. 
they can't really give you the plan. They'll, they'll, they'll start telling you all these things you got to do, 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 do. And this, this mindset, they'll try to give to their children to make them, ch the children do, do, do. But most often they're not, their children be little, you know, um, what's a good word to put for their children? Most often they're not, the children rebel against that. The children want to do it their way. And the thing about it is the person who obtained it mentally probably don't even know the steps of what they did in their mind to, to give over because everybody has their own perception, right? So they probably mentally don't know how to say, well, every day I thought about it. You know, every day it felt good inside of my heart. And, and, and when I thought about it, I felt that thing. I experienced that thing. I saw that thing. I smelled that thing. I always use my human imagination with they think they probably can't articulate it to their children that way and so really they don't leave the children the juice they'll leave the children the money but then when they leave the children the money the children are probably wild out and just spend the money recklessly recklessly you know or do it do something crazy with the money or don't become as as major as mom and dad was because mom and dad probably had the mental the deeply rooted subconscious mind thinking, but mom and dad didn't know how to express that and relate it to the children. Mom and dad thought maybe I gotta tell them, you know, you gotta work hard. You gotta get up four o'clock in the morning. You gotta outbeat everybody else. You gotta do, 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 do. But mom and dad didn't know. No, it was always about what you were being. It was about what you were thinking. It was about what was penetrating in this mind. It was about when other people doubted you, you stayed into that unwavering faith. It was about when things looked shitty, you, you, you still held on in your heart. You carried that thought of what you wanted to be. You carried that thing in your heart every day. It was about when you were sick, when you were tired, when you was lonely, no matter what this physical reality told you or showed you, it was about you saying, well, I'm still going to be da 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 Whatever that thing is, I really feel like if we all were taught this, our adulthood would be different, but the beautiful thing is we can change our thought. The beautiful thing is not only can we change our thought, but we can teach our children or younger generations about this year being, about this year mindset. So that they wouldn't, you know, have years that they trying to do, do, do like we did. So that they wouldn't have all of those years wondering, Man, Beyonce and, and Lil Wayne and, 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 and Fantasia, whoever maybe they look up to, maybe, maybe they're not just lucky. Maybe they have the ability to focus a little bit better than ours, you know? Maybe their ability to focus and be a conscious creator instead of creating by default is just a little bit different. Yeah, maybe they just have a bit more of unmovable, unwavering faith in that area. Because even as a creator, you know, you know, you have different people, different types of creators, you know, in different areas. Like some people could create money like this. You know, some people could create, you know, with relationships with 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 um, health and wellness with with. Whatever it is, there's always some people that have the ability to do it quick and easy in one area because they don't have resistance in that area. But then there are other people that's, man, I wish I would have got the job and I hope I'm the right person for the job. And, and why don't I ever get the job? Because they create resistance in that area. Oh, everybody else is lucky. I really, really want that. And by them wanting it too much, they push that thing away. And this goes even with relationships. You ever been in a relationship with somebody and it was really kind of like smothering, kind of like a little earth. They just want you to just, come on, let's get married. Come on, come over to the house. Come on, da 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 And you're like, wait, whoa, Kimo, so I'll be here. You, you, just, you just want it too much that you're kind of like pushing me away. Energetically, that's just how manifestations work too. Energetically, that's just how our thoughts are too. You got to be able to go with the flow of things in your journey mentally instead of creating resistance with things. Yeah, because you could push it away because, because you, you're wanting it too, too much. 
that's resistance, you know. And a lot of people, let's say, um, they get, they feel a little confused because it's, it's like a precious spot. They feel a little confused in their journey with the law of attraction because some people tell them, okay, get your vision board, you know, live in the end of which the field and then it'll come to you in divine timing. And they get a little frustrated because they like, wait, am I supposed to think about this thing? Am I supposed to be in the now with this thing? Am I supposed to want this thing or am I supposed to not care that I want it. It could be a little confusing early when you get into the place of wanting something and then you're worried about the resistance part of it. But here's the thing. The trick that worked for me in my manifestation process is living in the end. I've heard of living in the end. So I will milk the feeling as if I have it already, but I brought my end to my right now. And so if you could understand that, that was my thing that worked for me. Now, something else might work for you a little bit better. But my end would be, for example, if I wanted to move to another state, if I wanted to get another house and, and my house had to be different from my first house. So I would imagine how my first house was going to be. I mean, my second house was going to be, and it was going to be the total opposite of the first, right? And so it being the total opposite of the first, now I have, maybe I, I didn't want a big yard this time around. Maybe I didn't want a swimming pool this time around. So really, I'm designing that thing in my mind. So after I design that thing in my mind, then I go to the end of it as if I am there. I walk in it already, even though right now in this physical reality, I don't have it. I walk in it as if I'm there and then so now I'm there so I'm living in the end which is over there but in order for me to be in the now here's a trick to be in the now I gotta act like I'm in it right now like all of that that I created I designed it I created I go there in my human imagination as if I'm going into the future is what I'm saying. And you go in the future, you live in it, in your human imagination with your eyes closed, touching it, tasting it, feeling it, smelling it, all that good stuff. Using all your senses over there in your mind, over there in your mind. But then when you open your eyes and you walk around now in your current now state of being, you have that thing. You're owning that thing. So regardless if I'm standing in my old house right now or my new house right now, in my mind, I'm already the, the homeowner. It don't matter where you're standing. If you're standing outside homeless right now, if you're standing at work right now, you could always tap into your human imagination and bring whatever it is that you are wanting to your right now is what I'm saying. And so this is, um, this is in alignment with that Think and Grow Rich concept book, if you ever heard about that, because you're pretty much preparing yourself for your riches, if that's what it is that you're wanting. You're preparing yourself right now for that job, for that house, for that car, right now. <laughs> so when you're on the bus, when you're riding to work on the bus, you can be in your car right now. And so when you do things like that, you tricking your subconscious mind because your subconscious mind don't know if this thing is happening right now, if it happened in the past, or if it is going to happen in the future. All it knows is that you're having a thought. So it's going to give you more. Your subconscious mind is going to give you more of whatever it is that thought is that you're creating for it. And this is the precious thing that little girls and little boys know how to do automatically because they're in tune to the little girl and little boy in them. Remember when we played Barbie? Remember when we played with our Cabbage Pack doll? With Barbie and Ken and Cabbage Pack and the little black, I forget the little black girl name with the little Afro puffs in their head. Remember when we had tea time? Remember when we played nurse and doctor as a little girl? Anybody remember this? When we used to do those type of things, we would tap into our human imagination. Our human imagination is tied to our subconscious mind, which is the seed of our soul. <laughs> it has the ability to draw things to us. 
And so when we were there, nobody couldn't tell us we didn't have our imagination, imaginary friend. Nobody couldn't tell us that we wasn't a doctor. Nobody couldn't even tell us that we couldn't fly. Nobody couldn't tell us that unicorns wasn't real. Nobody couldn't tell us that we could be, do, or have anybody because we was tapped in back then. But then along comes life. Along comes programming. Along comes mama and daddy and teachers and doctors and, and lawyers and pastors and religion and all of this here that tells you, no, you, no, no, you can't do that. But yeah, it's okay to dream, but you, you're dreaming a little too big here. You wilding out of your subconscious mind a little too big here. And so they put a cap on top of your boundless universe. They put a limit upon your mind. So you're the person who have to become limitless again. You have to take that program off and reprogram it to be boundless. To be, do, or have anything. Nobody ever know what you're thinking. This is how you manipulate everybody or everything in your universe. By them yielding to what you think of them. This is how you obtain greatness for yourself. Prosperity, abundance, freedom, peace, whatever it is. In here, this is how I obtain retirement in here. Because guess what? The limit said, no, you're supposed to retire at 55 or 62. I don't know what the hell of the age is because in my mind, since I was a teenager, I said to myself, oh no. I'm not working all of those days of my life for somebody else. That was my law. That was the thing that I told myself in my subconscious mind. Oh no, that's too much work. I don't see myself doing that and going home old after I gave all of my energy away to another business, another person's vision, another person's dream. Then I go home and what? What I'm gonna do? My life force is going to be gone at that time. Go home to sit on the sofa and do what? No. So in my mind, since I was younger, I had in my mind that I was getting about it wherever I was going to be working at. I didn't even have a job yet. I would remember it like it was yesterday. The, lady, the ladies in the neighborhood, the older ladies in the neighborhood, they used to love the... The men that would come in the bucket trucks and stuff, they used to always, you know, I always gravi gravitated to people with wisdom, older people. And I would see how their body language would change and how they would flirt with the little linemen and stuff like that. Every time the linemen come, they always said about how much, you know, how his benefits were so good and how he had a good job. And they used to have stuff, little treats and stuff for the linemen, you know, to give him something to eat or whatever. And I asked the linemen one day, what is it about your job? Why does everybody think that you have a good job? This man told me, he's like, they think I have a good job because I have benefits. And one day when I'm about 55 years old, I'll be able to retire and do what I want. As a little girl, my little smart ass, I told him, I was like, well, when I grow up, I'm gonna have a good job too. But I'm not working till I'm 55 years old. No, maybe when I'm 40, maybe by 40, yeah, I'm gonna stop working when I'm 40. That's what I said. And in my mind, I kept that thought. I kept, when I went to college, I was like, well, I'm gonna go get this degree, but I ain't gonna be working too long. Even with my children, I would tell them, hey, y'all, look, hey, I, look, when I'm 40, I'm retired, I'm about to go do my thing. I didn't know where I was going. I didn't know what I was saying, but I was putting this here in my subconscious mind and it became law and look at me today. <laughs> I just walked into it effortlessly because it was something that was always on my mind, something that I always told everybody, yep, I'm, I'm retired. Even when I was at work, I would think when people give me things to do, I'm thinking in the back of my mind, well, I don't know if I'm gonna, I'm gonna be here for this here long project, but I, I help out, you know, cause I'm retired, yeah. Every time somebody would say, well, how long you been with the company? Every year that passed, well, I've been here for so and so years, but yeah, I'm going to be retiring too. <laughs> if you begin to say those things, and you don't have to be braggadocious with it and saying it outside, and I please don't encourage you to say it outside to your reflections, keep it in here. <laughs> keep it private. 
let this be your little closet where you keep all of your secrets and that's what's done in the dark it shall come to light meaning that what you put in your subconscious mind it shall manifest into physical form because that's how this thing work that's how it's always worked that's the key to this whole day going thing. Whether you want something real, real big, real, real small, it don't matter. You always creating, you always manifesting. And so for me, I, I didn't really, my desire was that retirement was a new start, new home, just be able to, at peace and do my thing. Now, some people, they, they probably want, you know, mansions and, 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 and 16 cars and all that. Dream as big as happiness for you. As happiness looks like to you. It don't have, your happiness don't have to look like this here. Your happiness could be one of those little bands that travel around the world and have everything inside of it, a kitchen and a bedroom and, 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 and you can see the world and you don't have no house. Your happiness could be all of you, you and your mama living together in the family home or whatever. Whatever happiness looks like and feels like to you, think on that thing for your future, for your new reality. Because today, right now, wherever you are in your physical reality, it is a collection of your old thoughts. So let your tomorrow be a reflection of what your new thoughts are. <laughs> okay, let me look at this here these uh comments right quick because i've been running my mouth yeah thank you thank you my dream was to become a medical doctor but but what you change your mind that's the but yeah yeah i see you hey ricky thank you for being here queen mother thank you yeah be hat be out of me that's how you say that Oh, look at Rasta Melanie. Thank you for being here, babe. Hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. Yes. Pray. Playtime was real. It really was. It still is real. It's just that we got serious with it. Playtime is the best time. Let me tell you, before I go to bed at night, no matter what, I have my playtime. And you should have yours. When you wake up in the morning, when you go to bed at night, that's playtime. Because you were about to drift into zero point frequency, like zero point where all creation begins. Your subconscious mind is connecting to the superconscious where all creation re exists, right? It is the most pivotal moment. It is the most precious moment where you could create and you can bring that thing back into physical form. It is a powerful point of energy when you're drifting off to sleep and when you're waking up. And you could see that it's powerful because you were in another realm and most often than not, you you're, the other realm where you came from starts to drift away from you and you lose memory or so to speak, you lose touch or connection from it and you begin to forget your dream and then you're back in physical form. But in that dream, though, in that dream, you could fly. In that dream, you were shape-shifting. In that dream, you had all of your superpowers. In that dream, you was tapped into 100% of your brain capacity. So while you're drifting back to your little maybe 10%, so you could become your little physical avatar person again, while you're drifting back away from that, it's almost like you're sending E.T. phone home. It's almost like you want to send a quick message up in there. Hey, send me money. Bring me money on the, in the physical reality. I'm riches. I'm wellness. I'm prosperity. You begin to imagine that state of being and it will become law in your physical reality because that is the um, theta wave brain length, wavelength for your brain. So you want a higher frequency automatically in those two pivotal moments. But most of us tired from jobs, we're so exhausted that the job probably make you go to sleep and you you really be think about nothing but working and so that that is the reason why tomorrow you're experiencing more working because your drifting stage is is a stressful stage you just passing out instead of being able to drift and use your imagination before you drift 
And so you get more of that old lifestyle over and over because you, you're missing out on that pivotal moment. And this is why I believe in, 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 in the biblical text, the, the, the secret coding, the hidden gems in there, like how they say, don't go to bed angry. Yeah, because you're creating more of that. Even how they say in a dream, in a vision of the night, when man sleeps and slumbers, I give him his orders and his instructions. Yeah, because that's when the divine connection is taking place. Easily. This is the state of being that babies, when they're looking around and their little head can't even, can't even hold, be held still. You know, they can't control their neck just yet. And they're just looking around and wobbling. And, and they begin to smile and stuff. We say, oh, oh, he or she is, is talking to an angel. No, this, 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 this baby is, is tapped into that delta state of being where everything is possible, infinite intelligence. And it's a blissful state of being. It's a creative state of being. But we forget about that state of being. And we go to bed mad, or we'll pass out, or as soon as we get up, the alarm clock going off, and we're probably already late, so we run in because, you know, work and, and other stressful things you know, in, or maybe a stressful, abusive relationship or, or not loving self, all of these things play a factor in your creative ability. So you're more focused on those things and the stresses of life than you are on that drifting state. <laughs> you're more focused on that when, when really, if you drift off in it and you wake up in it, it has to come. But nobody really talks about that. Nobody tells us that little secret, that little hit and call. We have to stumble upon that later on in life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and this is why these stressful, stressful situations, stressful environments. This is why our environment really, really matters. This is why our peaceful and clear mind allowing our creativity to flow really matters. And is really important when manifesting. It's really important when you are creating, even if you're not creating good things, even when you're creating shitty things, it matters because then you begin to understand, oh, I'm creating more of this shitty mess. Yeah, playtime was real. I knew it was for me. Let's see. You look gorgeous. Oh, thank you, babe. Thank you. How do you remember your dreams more easily? Hey, queens. How do you remember your dreams more easily? Well, this that I'm talking about here, it's hooked up to the infinite intelligence of knowing, right? So you know it. <laughs> you know it. So before you go to bed at night, just like I was saying, the drifting off sleep to sleep, you ask yourself the question. You ask yourself, because God, your God, never asks itself a question that he or she don't already know the answer to. So you ask yourself, what does it feel like to remember all of my dreams? That's what you do. You just put it in the form of a question. And then you sleep. This is what I did on purpose. I would ask myself a question before I go to bed. And then I would also, I would add to that. I would say, I'm about to have an amazing dream. And my dream is about to tell me what I need to do in da 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 da, -da area of my life. And I will go to sleep with a notebook and a pen on the side of my bed. Yeah. And as soon as I open up my eyes, I will begin to write down the things that I'm remembering from that dream. And I got to a point where I didn't need the pen no more. Where I remembered everything. Matter of fact, I got to a point where my book that I wrote was inspired because of all of the information I got from my dreams. Where, you know, sometimes when I do a voiceover on TikTok, that's me in the middle of the night hitting the record button because I got that information from my dreams. <laughs> that is a precious time when you're dreaming, just like the biblical text says, it'll give you your orders and your instructions. Through my dreams, that's how I created all of the products that's on my website through my dreams. It'll tell me that that, that little voice, <laughs> it'll tell me, add this, add this amount of this. Yeah, that's how I did my soaps, my lotion, all that in my dreams. 
So it's really important that you pay attention to when you go in this other realm because it gives you this information. Now, why would my dream tell me to add such and such to my to my soaps and my lotion? Why? Now, I'm gonna ask you this here question. Why do you think my dream would say that to me? Why do you think that? I just, I just gave you the answer. You, 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 you understanding? If you understanding this, you could be able to tell me why my dream would tell me that. My dream would tell me that simply because I, during my wake stage, had that question. Just like I told you a minute ago, God never asks itself a question that he and she, or he or she don't know the answer to. So in my wake state, when I was first starting off making my products, and I was just wondering, I wonder, I wonder how does it get this kind of consistency? I wonder, I wonder if I can make it do da 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 da. I wonder, hmm, is that too much? Is that too little? Hmm. I wonder what the pH balance of this thing is. I wonder, I wonder. So when you are asking yourself those things in the daytime. Your dreams are really coming to give you the answers in the nighttime. <laughs> That's why in the dream, in the vision of night, your orders or your instructions are being downloaded to you. But that's if you tapped into them. That's, that's if you're paying attention. That's if you're remembering or joining your consciousness to your subconscious. And that's when it happens. But if you want it, you ask yourself that question and God never asks himself a question that he or she don't know the answer to. So you're going to be tapped into infinite intelligence, which has all memory, all knowing, all lifetimes, all thoughts, all experiences already there. And you just, it's like you're going into the fire room. You're going into the fire room in an effort to bring it forth in your physical reality through thought. And then after it's come into your head as thought, it comes forth in the physical. Let's see. I really love your page. That's the don't go to sleep mad because you create more anger. Yeah, you create whatever it is that you drift off to sleep in. When you're thinking about why life is shit in and why this happened to me today, that's why you, it's so important to rewrite your story. It's so important to, if you had a shitty day, wait, lay down in that drifting state of being and rewrite that day as if you woke up and you had the most amazing day, like, like you were just on divine timing for everything and everything just worked out perfectly. Rewrite it, remember it that way and go to sleep remembering that peaceful, beautiful, perfect day. If not, if you sit there and you dwell upon what happened at work and what happened on the road with the road rage, you can get more of that. You give attention to the things that you want more of. Especially when you're drifting off to sleep. Especially that moment. I mean, I understand we remember that, that thing that happened on the road. But look at it. Take a deep breath. Because inhaling and exhaling is allowing you to release that energy. And try not to think about that. But if any time you don't think about that is when you're drifting off to sleep. Oh, don't do that to yourself. Because really, you're doing it to yourself. Your cells of your body. Is feeding that anger, that hate, that dis-ease that you're bringing to yourself. Yeah, something that they don't teach you when you're in school. Nice to see you. Hey, Miss Stephanie, thank you for being here. Yeah, let's see. You better believe it because you're answering your question. Yeah, pretty much it's you because it's all you. It's only you that's really existing. If you really think about it, some people get a little creepy just to hear that idea, to have that thought, wait, I'm here by myself? Yeah, you're the only one. Remember the movie, The Matrix? You are all that exists. You are the one, you are the Neo. I, I'm just your subconscious mind. <laughs> these people in this comment section over here, these are just people in your subconscious mind. They're saying, and you're gonna give attention to every comment that's saying something that you already have going on in your thoughts already. You're gonna always be attracted to everything that is going on up here. So every last one of you <laughs> are creating this. You create your reality as wild as it seems. You could be a mother, you could be 
you can be a father and have children, but all of that is your thoughts. You thought that up. So right now, I'm a mother, but my children aren't here in my, in my vision right now. So really, they don't even exist. They, nothing exists until you give your attention to it. As wild as that might seem, but even when they, you give your attention to it, and even when you are close to them, or you feel like you can touch them, you're not really touching them, you're touching yourself. You're not really feeling nothing but feeling yourself. That's how cold you are with it. This reality is you experiencing yourself. When you touch, when you touch somebody, you're touching. You feel your, you feel your hand. When you, when you walk, I don't have shoes on right now, but when I'm walking, what I'm really feeling is my feet. <laughs> you're feeling yourself. You're experiencing yourself because that's the, all there is. The universe is within you. As within, so without. When you're loving on somebody else, you think you love them, but you're really showing yourself the capacity of love that you have, the ability to open up to love. When you're having sex, this is why you could have an orgasm without another person being there. When you're having sex, you're just really having sex with yourself. You're really feeling the depths of yourself. Everything is you. Everything starts with you. From your thoughts to your touch to your smelling, you're smelling yourself. You're, you're hearing yourself. You're experiencing yourself. And so oftentimes in a journey, when we, when we first begin the journey, we, we're told that, yeah, you need to be more selfish. This is why you need to be more selfish because all is God, all is you experiencing you. When people come to tell you shitty things, that was a thought that you had deeply rooted in that subconscious mind. And some people will say, no, that wasn't me. Yes, underneath them layers and layers where you hide things gets uprooted what's really your truth and what's really your signal. It's you, it's all you, it's all you in your kingdom. We just come to participate in your kingdom when you vibrate on a particular frequency where we are. So I only show up when you have a thought, <laughs> God. When you think about things like this, it's the only time I'm gonna show up or people that's on this frequency gonna show up. Y'all might think in the physical reality, no, that's not true. That's the a logarithms on the tick to the top. But baby, there's a universal a logarithm that TikTok can't even phantom to even touch. <laughs> it's you. So when you want to hear a message about, about, um, about the law of assumption, you have that thought and up, you go on TikTok and then somebody talking about it. But when you want to hear a, a message that, that life is hard up, you go on TikTok and then somebody talking about it. And then you comment up and then you say, oh, I was just thinking that. Oh, I was just talking to my girlfriend about that. Yeah, because you're all that exists and you're not going to be able to run away from you. Because you can run, you can run. You can be like, oh, I'm getting away from this mindset or I'm getting away from this situation. And then you turn around, oh, there you go. <laughs> because your thoughts are there and your thoughts were there and your thoughts are here and your thoughts are here. And so you're thinking all of this here thing up. So let's have good thoughts. Let's think. And by using our human imagination that we can be do or have anything. Let's erase all of the old thoughts and let's start new. And you know, I'm gonna tell you all this here before I leave. Let's see, let me check these comments right quick. Hey series, thank you for being here, babe. You are magic. Yeah, you are too, babe. Twinkle twinkle. <laughs> yeah, you can't run from you. I'm gonna tell you all this here. You know, I'm real passionate about speaking. I finally embrace my calling and I love what I do. But I wanna say thank you to you all, really. When I say thank you to you, I'm saying thank you to myself because I'm all that exists. But in, in my mind, in my thoughts, really being a help to you, I want you to know that you also are a help to me. 
You are a help to me when you all send me emails, the people that are in my newsletter that send me emails that tell me how much I inspire them. You are a help to me that so much that if I have a thought, if I experience something on a lower frequency, I'm immediately reminded of one of you all. It's almost like you all keep me, help to keep me in alignment too. Because I'll think, wait, hold up, no, this is what I teach. No, wait, hold up, no, I, I gotta do better than this here. And so y'all keep me in alignment. As I give to you all, you all give in to me at the same time as what I'm saying here. And I feel so thankful for every last one of you. There, were mo there are moments where, where I'll, t I'll share this here story with you all before I go. On my way out here, I honor you for allowing me to be present with you. Oh, thank you, baby. Thank you, Siri. I'll share this little fearful. I don't, I don't like talking about low frequency things because yeah, I teach, you know, talk about what you want more of. But I will say this. I had an experience of this particular journey of um, retiring and coming out here to another state that was really, really scary. And a guy friend of mine who I was talking to, he says, you know, victory ain't always pretty and that stuck with me. It's not always sweet, you know? And sometimes all hell can break through. I wanna let you know about this here so you don't give up in whatever it is you're trying to manifest. Sometimes all hell will break through <laughs> before you get that which you were trying to manifest. So on this particular trip, I was traveling from Louisiana to Arizona to move, you know, to retire, to get my manifestation, right? And on that trip, I was, I, well, we, it was a group of us that took turns driving and stuff. We took a U-Haul and my personal car to drive. This was supposed to be a 22 hour drive, right? 22 hours turned into 32 hours because we didn't calculate the fact that we had a, a trailer on the back of the car, which was supposed to go at 55 miles versus, you know, the actual speed limit, right? So it took us a really, really long time to travel. It was long, it was tiresome, it was stressful, fatigue. And the plan was to stop. The plan was to stop and enjoy the journey, but because of the people were there, they were like, no, we can do this, let's keep going. Now, we all decided, okay, we're gonna break up the time when we're gonna drive, right? But along that journey, it felt, it started to feel like hell on wheels because we got so fatigued and we, we were in, we were, got to a place where we were tired and we were gonna, we wanted to find rest, but there was no place, you know, to get a hotel, to rest, to pull over. We were in pitch black darkness, right? And it was really an eerie feeling. I never, I didn't, I didn't pay attention or think that, that first of all, I didn't know Texas was that darn big. <laughs> Second of all, I didn't know that they had mountains there. I didn't, I didn't think, we, we collectively didn't think, wait, we have a trailer and these brakes on this U-Haul is really not that good. So we're in the darkest of black, pitch black, with no lights, no street lights, going down hills. Through every time you go down the, the hill or the mountain or whatever, the trailer is pushing the U-Haul even faster. So it's like you're on a ride, but this ride could like in you. You don't see what's going on at the bottom of the hill because there's no lights. Only your, the U-Haul truck was the lights, right? They had coyotes, they had deer and stuff on the side of the road, like looking at you, looking at the lights, it almost looked like they would say, you better not stop. <laughs> They look so hungry, you know? And we're tired. We're looking at the GPS, and every time we look at the GPS, it will say, okay, eight hours when we look at it one time, and then the next time we look at it, it's 12 more hours before we get there. It's like the time was being pushed back because our miles per hour was less than what the GPS had us calculated to be going by. Then we had a change in time. Then we were trying, everything was just 
chaotic every day everything but this was supposed to be a joyous experience to bring me to my manifestation and so we stopped in at gas stations and i don't drink coffee y'all know i try to eat clean and stuff right so we had um gas stations and I'm, i promise you not because i think you you would judge me uh, or that i care about you judging me but i promise you i've never done crack before but i'm going to use this example i felt like I could relate to what a person on crack feels like, you know, that that antsy feeling because I was so sleep deprived, like, like oh, I got to go to sleep. Oh, I can't keep still. Like, oh, I was at the gas station. I was doing jumping jacks and trying to do kicks or whatever just to stay woke because it, this was like four hours away from this here house, right? And I'm doing all that I could. And the people that were with me, they were fatigued too. And I'm like, wait, we got to stop. We gotta stop. I can't. I'm, 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 I can't go no more. I can't take my turn no more. I can't. I, I just can't. And they were like, "Well, at the last stop, at the last stop, I, we we got this these energy, um, these energy, um, I don't know, these little powder energy things in a bottle from GNC or whatever." So it, it had caffeine in it, and then, and then they were like, "And we bought this coffee. They have these cold." coffees at the gas station, I don't know, in a bottle or whatever. And I'm so fatigued and I'm so, I have so much anxiety and I'm so sleep deprived. Till I looked at the, the bottle of coffee, I was like, wait a minute, I'm already feeling kind of antsy. If I take that, it ain't gonna have me tripping, huh? And I ain't gonna be tripping more than what I'm already tripping, huh? Cause I had never drunk coffee before. Man, I tell you, they were like, no, no, no. It, it's, gonna, it, it's gonna take the edge off for you. And I was like, okay. And I sat there and I drank the coffee and I had some of the little energy boosters. So I was like doubled up on caffeine. And I was able to take my turn, my last turn to bring us to this particular location. And we arrived safely and everything. But during that moment, that was the most fearful moment that I've ever had in my physical reality. Because I honestly thought for a moment in fear that I wasn't going to make it. I wasn't going to make it to my happily ever after. I wasn't going to make it to my manifestation that I had been living in the end of every morning and every night. I was driving though. I was driving with fear. But in my mind, I was fighting and dealing with my fear. And I was saying, no, 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 it can't be. No, 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 it can't turn out this way. This is not the end. <laughs> this is not going in like that. No, 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 no. Even with sweat in the palm of my hand as I held that steering wheel when it was my time to drive, I wouldn't accept that to be the end for my reality. So what I'm saying to you, the reason why I brought that up is Oftentimes, we be right there. We be right there to our thing that we're manifesting and all hell will break loose. It'll, you will begin to experience maybe fear, maybe doubt, maybe anxiety. But don't you dare give up. Don't you dare quit. See, people don't talk about the shitty times that come. But I'm sharing you, this is the shitty moment before I made it to this house that I had been manifesting and dreaming of and living in the end of. That damn fear showed it fa his face. And I'm telling you, you have never seen a black sky <laughs> till you've experienced a black sky and you alone on the road and you have all of your possessions and all of your loved ones and you sleep deprived and you have anxiety and fear and worry and all these things, but yet you have this little tiny piece of faith, just like a grain of mustard seed. And that's really all you need to make it to your finish line. But I'm sharing only that story, just only this one time, because I'm not gonna regurgitate that thing no more, because I know how the laws of attraction work, but I'm sharing with that, you, that story, it's for you to know that it ain't always just gonna be smooth sailing. Whatever you have in here is going to show up out here. 
That fear of the unknown for me showed up out here in my physical reality while I was on that road. And the guy friend that I was talking to, he was like, talk to me, talk to me. What's going on? And I, I, I made it to the house and that's when I, I was able to just release all of it. And I cried and I said, that was the scariest shit of my life. <laughs> now the whole time I was keeping it together. I was keeping it together and dealing with myself mentally because I already know that all is me. So I was keeping it together. I was keeping my composure together in here. But when I made it to my destination, I released that thing and I was like, that was the scariest shit of my life. It was scary, but I made it. And that's when he shared with me, he was like, you know what? Sometimes victory ain't pretty, but we made it. And I want to share that with you. It's not always pretty, but I promise you, if you keep the faith, if you hold on, if you hold on to your unwavering faith, you can be, do, or have anything. That's my promise to you. Let me see, let me see. Thank you for holding the space for me. Yeah, I've been there. Hey, goddess, another book. <laughs> Man, I have book on top of books to write, and I have time for it now. Hi, um, situated savage. Okay, I love that name. All part of the story. It is all part of the story. You brought joy and tears to my eyes. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, definitely. At work, trying not to miss this message. Oh, hey, uh, queens. Yeah, this is where I am right now. Yeah. So I want you to know that because people get on here, you know, they got people on here. I, I try to be tra as transparent as I could, even though I'm an introverted person, but they have people in our realities that come on here and they want to only show you and tell you about attracting and all of the good stuff. But baby, with attraction, you got to be able to deal with you at any point of frequency that you might vibrate at. You got to be able to master your emotions. You gotta be able to say, hello fear, hello darkness. <laughs> you gotta be, this is why mastering self is so important. This is why going in with self is so important because you gonna get tested by your sneaky link, your little doubt timers, whatever you call it, by your subconscious mind. Because as a man thinking so is he, if you have fear, it's gonna come out here. And so that was my fear meeting me on the road in the darkness. And it was the scariest, darkest fear that I had ever experienced. Now, mind you, now, I done levitated off the bed. I done went into other realms. I done seen people, soulless beings. I done seen people with eyes gouged out of their eyeballs socket. I've seen some scary things that other people will be shaking in their boots. But for me, this seemingly was the scariest of them all because I had all that I loved with me. All that I possessed in the physical form with me. <laughs> All of my manifestations were waiting for me, but yet I carried, it was like I was carrying a burden, so to speak, or energy on my shoulders while I was dealing with my deepest fear. And I had never been in such a vulnerable moment like that before. And I held that steering wheel, wheel and said, we're going to make it. I'm going to get out of this. We're going to be all right. <laughs> so remember to talk to yourself. Remember to encourage yourself. And I said that because you all encourage and inspire me too. Just like I come here, you inspire me because I think about something that you say sometimes. I think about that. And it keeps me going. It keeps me doing the lives. It keeps me making my product. It keeps me paying attention to my human imagination too. Because energy is transferable. It's always an energy exchange. Let's see. He says, I've been there. Oh my God. But God. But God. Yeah. Any tips when it comes to fasting? Fasting. If it's your first fast, the tips that I would say is don't go too long. Like, don't try to go 40 days and 40 nights. Build up to that particular state of being. And the first thing if it's okay if it's a juice fast i would say make sure that you incorporate some liquid coconut oil and some pink himalaya sea salt 
Let me show you. This is the um, this is think Himalayan sea salt. You're gonna put some of that in your juice if it's a uh, liquid fat. And then you're gonna get you're gonna make sure you have some liquid coconut oil. Matter of fact, I'm not fasting no more, but this here drink that I was drinking for my breakfast is you could probably see it at the top. You see that oil up in there? I have coconut oil in this drink. Water is water, coconut oil, pink Himalayan sea salt, some agave, a little bit of agave to sweeten it. And what made it purple was the fact that I had some juice. This here is just optional. I just had some juice. And I, that's what made it look purple. But that's what this is. This is a perfect fast if you're not um if you're not eating food. I don't know you didn't say if you're not eating food, if it's just a liquid fast. I will start off there because now you have your minerals. You have all your minerals. Think of a layer sea salt is about 80 plus minerals inside of it, right? Or your electrolytes. You know how like when people drinking those energy drinks, you know, um, what they call them? The athletes or whatever when they're drinking those energy drinks is they looking for electrolytes where you get your electrolytes from your pink and blue sea salt and this here also would break down the food if you're fasting for maybe losing weight it'll break down the food because it'll help you to uh create hydrochloric acid in your gut so basically it's going to help you you know go to the bathroom you know how people be using those acid acidopolis those little white little tablets for the good beneficial bacteria well nature has that beneficial bacteria already in things like agave in tacky things like um sweet tamarind dates things like that but agave is going to be your pre or probiotic for your gut then you got your coconut oil your coconut oil is anti-inflammatory so if there's inflammation going on in that gut it's going to soothe it once that bowel get moved and you know old fecal matter is moved around now you got coconut oil soothing up the inflammation so you don't feel the burning and stuff not only that coconut oil is antifungal antiparasitic antimicrobial antibacterial and it tastes good <laughs> oh and and it has all of the amino acids amino acids is what people be talking about in lieu of that so-called protein you know how people be asking vegans well where do you get your protein from i get my protein every day i have protein for breakfast right here it's the building block of muscles so to speak so you get you got your protein you got your beneficial bacteria you got your minerals going and the only reason why i put this here was with just some little flavor but it's a it's from grapes so and it's real it's real organic grapes and you that's an option the grape juice if you don't have the grape juice just do the water agave this pink himalaya sea salt and some liquid coconut oil and that's gonna flush you out but at the same time you're gonna have your minerals and then throughout the day drink your regular water with nothing in it to keep yourself hydrated because you want to do a balance of this here type drink plus your regular spring water type drink. So I'm gonna drink this here, and then by the end of the day, I'm gonna finish this here gallon. And so really, if you do stuff like that, you don't be hungry. You don't be looking for no meal because you got all your minerals. You, When you're hungry, you don't be thinking, ooh, I need a donut. No, when you want a crave or something sweet, what you're really saying is, ooh, I, I need some dates. I need some sweet tamarind. I need, I need a fruit, is what you're saying. And when you're craving, some people say they crave for potato chips. What your body is really saying is, ooh, I need some pink Himalaya sea salt. When you need something salty, you need your pink Himalaya sea salt. But we do the man-made thing and, don't, and we get our white salt and we get our white sugar and we deprive ourselves from minerals or electrolytes or our life force. I hope I answered everything from there. <laughs> Listen. Okay. Um, this journey is a real journey for me. I'm still stumbling. Yeah, change that way of saying that though. I'm learning, I'm growing. Yeah, I'm getting it. I'm perfecting this thing because it, it's, it's gonna be that. It's gonna be you learning. If you, you you could look at it as a stumble, but it, or you could look at it as a set up. But really, 
or I mean, or you can look at it as a setback, but it's really like a set up for you to evolve, you know? Each person, each thing you go through is just making you better. Just like different relationships. That first relationship that we had when we was in high school, it made us better for our husband and stuff, you know? So look at it that way. You're always learning. Okay, let's see. I'm so excited about your retreat. I knew in my spirit when I first oh, stumbled upon you. Yeah, I'm excited about it too. I feel really excited about it upon your video that you were coming to Arizona. Oh, you knew it. Oh, see that? That's beautiful. Because you tapped in. You tapped in. And, and so and so if, if I was to think negative on the moment that I came from um, Sedona and say, oh man, it's so horrible that my house was destroyed two days after I came from my meditation retreat. Oh, it's so horrible. And if I was to give, have given up at that moment, you know, it would have done me no justice. Because now as I look back at that moment, I say, oh man, it was perfect. It was perfect that I came to visit this state about four or five times before I went on that meditation treat, to retreat to fall in love with it first. So I fell in love with it and then I came and I did a retreat and then I fell in love with the retreat and the energy in Sedona. And then I went back to what may seem to be a shitty environment, may seem to be, oh, a hurricane. Oh my God, a hurricane. That's it, I'm done, I'm done. If I was giving up at that moment, instead of saying, okay, this is gonna be the last time that I go through this because I know a place. I know a place now that I wanna go. I know a place that I wanna be. And so now I can look at that and say, oh, you know, it was just working out perfectly. It was supposed to happen. <laughs> the storm, the hurricane night it was supposed to come and piss me off. <laughs> yeah. I was supposed to experience Sedona before Hurricane Ida, so I'll have a place in my mind that I will manifest and try to aspire to come to be. You see, all of our shitty stuff that we think is shitty in the moment really be things that set us up for greatness a little bit later. It's just how you look at things. All of them so-called relationships that didn't, didn't fan out to be so good really set us up for us to have communication skills and to be able to love first ourselves before we try to give our love to anybody else to fill up our cup first it was supposed to so you it's just all in how you look at it but yeah i'm excited about um my sedona trips too and check this out i went to the store the other day and i met a man in the store and he was telling me about the land that he owns in sedona you know, because I'm looking for a spot. And he's, he's a perfect person. You know, you just, when you're in alignment, I'm telling you, things come to you. you. You go to the mailbox, you were looking for a plumber, and he outside across the street at somebody else's house. And he's the best plumber in town, so to speak. That's how it makes way for you. That's why it's so important that you take this journey serious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you. I feel like I'm being called to fast yeah right now yeah so that's that's the perfect fast i just gave you the perfect one and it's gonna really give you everything your life force and once you get into it for me i started off you know at three days and then i tried a seven day then i went for like 15 days and boy when you get to those longer ones though oh my god that's when you see god face to face because you get your body go i think they call it um ketosis i don't know how to pronounce the word ketosis something like that ketosis ketosis that your body goes into that state of being and you begin to realize that <laughs> your god so to speak like you remember how in the biblical text jesus went and fasted for 40 days and 40 nights and then he was tempted by the wiles of the devil at his lower self it's like your lower self don't matter no more it's like you ain't it ain't about survival no more it ain't about your sexual energy no more it ain't about power it's like you just could surrender and you just you just get this state of bliss just this euphoria almost like exotic type 
being that overtakes your body when you go on a fast for a long time. Even your skin, everything starts to clear up because now what's happened physically is that now you are producing more of your white blood cells inside of your body. Your body now is healing itself because you know how they say like 80% of your immune system lies in your gut. So now because you ain't been eating, you've been flushing out, you've been purging yourself and you know your gut and your brain are intertwined. So while you're purging your gut, you're also purging your mind. And so now you get new frequencies, new information, new beginnings inside and out as within, so without. So you're renewing your inside this is why fasting is important. You want to renew your inside so you can renew your outside. It is a beautiful thing. But like I said, I would start small. Get the will. Get the willpower to increase the duration of days if you're going to be fasting. That's how I did it. But if you did it before, go by out and do a long one if you think you could handle it. All is mine. You can do anything, really. Yeah what's that i wasn't hearing i don't know what part you wasn't hearing you look fabulous that's just my fa oh fantastic that's my energy that you see <laughs> my good energy out here but i thank you anyway thank you mama b you're such a blessing hey frederick how you doing babe if i purchase the sustain last year can i still use it yeah yeah definitely definitely it's herbs, it's dry herbs, it's, yeah. It's meditation, retreat in Sedona. I would love to do that. Yeah, I, it's gonna be meditation, yoga, introducing vegan food, um, uh, music, you know. I wanna get a whole bunch of different types of um, rooms that we can go in. And it'll be like, you know, you sleep there for an important time and just be in the mountains hiking. Also, I want to incorporate by these energy portals that's out there, these vortexes, so to speak. And just being in that particular area is just a high frequency by itself. But yeah, I want to get, I am in the process of getting other people, you know, other people that can speak besides myself. But it's something that I'm coordinating. But yeah, we're going to do all of those different things because I want people to leave that old mind and really go on a retreat mentally in their subconscious mind and go back renewed in a renewed state of being and have something to take back with them. Yeah, not a gift bag in the physical, but a gift bag here in that subconscious mind. The gift that keeps on giving. Yeah. So, let's say I'm doing quite well. This message has really good timing as often they do oh thank you babe i didn't set a date yet miss daphne but love hiking yeah 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 and so i want to do it a little when it's a little bit cooler because like yesterday it was like 115 out here and so a lot of people you know can't take that and so i want to wait you know so later in the year to do it when it's cooler and everybody could be able to you know stay hydrated you know, because I, it's my first, it's my first um, two weeks out here. And even though I love the sun and I bake in the sun, I have to drink a whole lot more water, you know, to be able to withstand it myself. So, yeah, so we're going to be doing all of that kind of stuff at the retreat. And I am hopeful that you all could come. You all could come. Let me see. What's the short bottle? This bottle? This was grape juice. I'm going to miss that comment. The sharp bottle. What, this sharp bottle? This is a guy based sweetener? If that's what you're talking about. I just got this here from the store. Normally, I big, get a um, big bottle from Amazon. But I'm waiting for it to come in. So, all right. I think I answered everything. She said she... I'm going back to make sure I didn't miss nobody comment right quick before I end this here. Yeah, I look like I answered everything all right so my friend told me about the heat yeah yeah the heat is really hot and that's that's for me being a melanated being i'm telling you all i sit out in the heat for hours but this heat is it, hot <laughs> it's hot so anyway that's it for today i just wanted to come on and, and share that with you all the purpose of this video was really to talk about you know having that childhood childlike mind you know if we were told 
back then that whatever we thought we could be, that we would be. And so if you didn't turn out to be that person that you thought, if you stumbled, start to renew your mind today. Change your mind today. It ain't too late. So you can be that person that you always wanted to be on tomorrow. Okay? Be blessed. Hey, uh, Cherry, thank you for being here, babe. This video was from my heart to yours. Be blessed, babe.